Welcome to week one of the short row sleeve cap cal. I'm getting better at saying it. Still need a little bit of a uh, acronym. This week we are going to look at our yarn choice. We're going to look at squat swatching, blocking your swatch, and then remeasuring your swatch. And we're going to look at the stitch pattern and choosing a suitable size. So quite a lot to get through, but it's all really important stuff. First off, I'm going to share the yarn that I've used. Now, I'm choosing to make the sweater and I'm going to make it with a bit of a mishmash of yarns. These are all similar but different fibres, so I thought it's a good opportunity just to share a little bit about fibre choice. So first off, I've got this Drops Alpaca, which is 100% alpaca. It's four ply. It's kind of fine there, but you can see there's there's a bit of fluff on it. It's got a bit of a halo, so you get some, some space around the kind of core twist. So that's number one. This is left over from the light Fandango sweater. The next, I've got this uh, opal sock yarn. This I bought on holiday last year, and this is classic uh, sock fibre. So it's 75% virgin wool. It's quite soft. Sometimes virgin wool can feel a bit itchy, but it feels quite soft, this. Um, and then 25% polyamide, which is kind of quite standard. The, the polyamide, I still don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but that will give it um, a bit of durability. And you can see there's a bit of, bit of fluff. So if we compare it with the pink, You can tell this is a bit more hardy. This it feels a bit softer, but if we look at the girth, probably about similar. My slight concern about this is how it's going to pull because with any self-striping yarns, um, you can get interesting pooling situations. So my swatch will help me determine whether it's going to look weird or fabulous. I'm looking at doing some big stripes between these two with my third yarn. In between so this yarn is beautiful pink this is a rivenets yarn so i've still got the ball band here it's called neem it's a four ply again and it's a hundred percent blue face let's say you probably can't read that but take my word for it it's a beautiful yarn this is what i used for my pair it up hat and mitten set and i thought maybe this might work as a little thin stripe between these two colors that's where i'm at now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away. I'm just going to swatch in these two. I'm fairly familiar with this one, so I'm happy that I can get gauge with that. But I'm going to swatch with these two just to share some techniques for swatching, measuring your swatch, that kind of thing. I'm also going to work up a very quick tutorial for the stitch pattern with this alpaca, just in case any of you uh, prefer to see it live rather than written. So to start, I'm gonna make a swatch in paired extended single crochet. I have a chain here of 28 stitches. The paired extended single crochet stitch pattern uses a multiple of two plus one stitches. So the reason I've done 20, 27, which is how many stitches I'm gonna have at the end of this row, and then I've done one extra as the turning chain. And in this pattern, the turning chain does not count as a stitch. So this first chain here, this is my turning chain and I'm going to ignore that and I'm going to work my first stitch into this little back hump there. I'm just going to give you a quick idea as to how the paired extended single crochet work here. For a full tutorial, check out my other video, which I will pop a link to top right. I'm going to start by inserting my hook into that first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. That is a single cro uh, extended single crochet made. This is using US terms. So I'm going to work two extended single crochet in that first chain from the hook. I have a separate tutorial for this single crochet, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about those here. So I've worked two extended single in my first stitch, which is the second chain from hook. I'm then going to skip this stitch here and work two more extended single into that next chain. One. Two. 
to be. Then I'm going to skip the next stitch. So skip that chain, two extended single crochet in that next chain. So the stitch pattern as we move along this row is to work two extended singles and then skip a chain and then two extended singles and then skip a chain and I'm going to work that all the way across to the end of the row and I should just have after skipping that chain I should have one stitch left and I've got this chain that I'm skipping and this is my last chain so that's the first chain I made I'm just going to make one extended single into that last chain and that is my first rather wiggly row you can already see how much bounce and stretch there is in that so now we've done that first row which is always the tricky bit I'm gonna work a second row just so you can see a little bit more easily how it works once you get into working in pattern so I'm chaining one which doesn't count as a stitch and then I'm going to start in the first stitch, which is the last stitch of the previous row. And I'm going to work two extended single crochets in that first stitch. Skip one stitch. Skip that stitch and then work two extended in the next. Two extended single crochet. Skip one two extended single crochet. So we're going to work that all the way along to the end of the row for our second row. So that's two extended single crochet here. And then we've got that stitch that we're skipping. And then this is the top of the first stitch from the previous row. So I'm going to work one extended single crochet in there. We've got a little bit of a lump there where we had our first turning chain. But that is two rows. So I'm going to carry on and make the swatch. I know for this stitch pattern, my tension can be a little bit loose. So I consciously try and tighten it up. Partly for the sweater and the cardigan, there's quite a lot of stretch you can't really see it in just two rows but there's quite a lot of stretch in this fabric so I err on going a little bit tighter because it will block out and I will uh, show you what that looks like when we get there okay so here we have our first swatch which is with the Dots alpaca um lovely and soft you can see what a pretty stitch it is I have just pinned it down because it will have a little bit of curl but you can see the movement on that is lovely. So when I pin this down, I'm going to take an initial gauge measurement in a moment. I'm not stretching it out at all. I'm literally pinning, pinning it down just to stop that curl from coming up. The second swatch, which is this opal, where are we? This opal yarn, um, Sweet Kiss. Um, I love how this is, look at how this is pulled so this is going to be made top down so this would be the top and the fabric is working down you can't really see the colors too well on this um video but trust me it's a beaut it's really interesting the way this is pulled so here you've got these very short let me just try and get the color better hang on a second but you can see that up the top here where you've got these little orange specks that's a very short color change and then you've got a longer color change here. And then you can see you go into this kind of medium length ones. And then, so if we look at this fuchsia pink, this fuchsia pink here, and then we've got a longer section of it here. So if you look at the overall change in the color scheme through the ball, it's a very long amount of yarn before you're gonna get a repeat of the exact thing. And I think it's actually just coming towards, I haven't even got a single repeat in this swatch yet. That's great, it means you're gonna have a lot of interest. If you're interested in how variegated yarns pull and the different types of variegated yarns you can work with, obviously I've got a post for that. So I'll pop that in the uh, comments below.
but yeah i'm really pleased with that i just wish the color would pick up better on on this video okay so next i'm going to take a pre-block gauge so if i look at these two swatches you can see they're roughly the same length this is a little bit wider you can just see at the edges you can just see it underneath we've got the same number of stitches in rows um i think my row gauge will be marginally taller but there's not a huge amount in it this was uh, the swatch that i was using for a tutorial so i do tend to crochet a bit lo looser so i will be mindful to get the same tension between the two fibers to tighten up a little bit with the uh, drops. I'm just going to pin this one out. Like I say, with this, I'm just going to pin it so that curl is out of the way. I use these little T-pins. Make sure you get rust-proof ones and don't get any cuffs near in it because yarn sort of catches on this bit sometimes, so be a bit careful with those. They're also very sharp. When I'm measuring gauge, I tend to use a solid ruler. They don't stretch and they're a lot easier to, to hold still. These little gauge measures are great as well. I do have a whole separate tutorial, obviously, on ma uh, making and measuring gauge swatches. So I'm not going to go over that in too much detail here, but I will show you how I go about it. Uh, the tape, tape measures, I'm sure there's a better name, the flexible ones, are great as well i love these for these are great for measuring body parts which we'll talk about when it comes to um measuring size this one from pim is great because it's like three meters long so if you want a really long one this is a good one your gauge swatch your gauge square one doesn't have to be square but should always be bigger than 10 centimeters this is because when we measure it we're going to measure the stitches and rows over a 10 centimeter area the edges the first and last rows and the edges are not going to be typical of your gauge. So you need the gauge swatch to be big enough to discount that. So we can measure that at different points. So what's this one? This is 13 and a half by 14 centimetres, give or take. So I'd normally make it about 15 centimetres square, but this will do for these purposes. What you might want to do... And I'm just going to, this is my little jar of pins. I'm just going to get a couple with some colours in. You might find it easier when you're measuring gauge rather than working with a ruler and having to hold it and count just to pop a pin in. So these stitches, I'm going to have to get close, aren't the easiest to see, but you can see you've got a pair. Let's use the crochet hook for this. You can see you've almost got this little fan shape there. So that's a pair of stitches. So you've kind of got these grid lines and each grid line is essentially two stitches. It's the same when you're counting rows with this stitch pattern. So you've kind of got two, two rows, two rows, two rows. So you can see that's the base of a stitch on, let's call this the right side. That's the base of a stitch on the right side that's the base of the next stitch on the right side. So you know from there to there is two rows, there to there is two rows, there to there is two rows, and there to there is two stitches. I hope that's clear. Right, I'm going to plop my tape measure, bang in the middle, and I'm going to start, so we're counting stitches. So like I say, we've got two stitches there, two stitches there. So I'm going to put, put this first marker pin in the base of that two stitches. I'm then gonna measure and just put it in, put the next pin in straight when it gets to 10 centimeters. So I know I've got my 10 centimeters, that's not quite straight. Now I've got my 10 centimeter distance between there. Then I'm gonna count stitches. And because I've done this on my base, right in the center, I can count that as, as one stitch essentially. Um, on this side, let's just zoom you in a bit. So on this side, we've got the base of the stitch here and then my pin is here. So I'm gonna call that two stitches there. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is where it's easy to lose count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Well, I promise I didn't set that up because 19 is the stitch count that our gauge is for. I've worked this crochet pattern a lot, so I've got quite good muscle memory for it. That said, I'm going to block this and this fabric has quite a lot of stretch. So when it comes to making it, I actually want to tighten my gauge up a little bit because the fabric will stretch a bit as you work. So although I've started out with 19 unblocked, which is great, it's probably going to stretch. So I probably want to have about maybe 20 stitches on that. So it blocks out to 19. So if you, you essentially, if you're going to block it, you want your stitching row count to be a little bit higher. So if I have 20 stitches in there, then when I space that out, I'm going to have fewer. I hope that makes sense. That is stitch gauge. Now let's do the same for rows. So I'm going to mark off my 10 centimetres with rows. And again, let's pop that one there at the base of that, those stitches where you've got your little fan. And then I'm going to go down to 10 centimetres. So you, you can see why if you only had a 10 centimetre swatch, you're going to be getting all this gubbins in. Um, so let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18. So that's quite tight, my row gauge pre-blocking. So my stitch is a little bit loose and my row is a little bit tight because the gauge says 16, uh, 16 rows you want. It does stretch out quite a lot. So I'm not actually unduly worried about that row gauge. I'm going to unpin this and I will show you How it stretches. You can see how much stretch there is in that. I don't want to. There's not as much stretch between the stretches, stitches, but with the rows, you've got a lot. Let's have a quick measure of this second swatch. Okay, just put my pins in. So we've started here on the edge of that stitch. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and a half. So that's more like what I want to be achieving because I know I can easily stretch that out to nineteen. So let's just check my row gauge on this. So I've measured those pins. So One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's about 17. So all in all, this is a little bit tighter. And this is, I'm happy with this because I know when I block this out, it's going to be fine. And if you look at this fabric compared to the other one, you should definitely write down your pre-block gauge, though, because you think you'll remember, but you won't. So I'm going to make a note of that. But if you look at this fabric, it's not quite as stretched. Well, you can see it's got all that stretch between the rows still. Um, but it has quite a different feel to the alpaca. So the, the wool is a little bit stiffer. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give them a little bath and then I'm going to block them out to gauge. So we've left that to soak for about 15 minutes. You don't really need that much with a swatch, just make sure the water gets right in there. I'm just going to Squeeze that out. When working with wool, 
Always make sure you don't agitate the fibre too much because that's what causes felting. This is um, no rinse wool wash that I've used. Just put a tiny little bit of that in to soften the yarn up a bit. So I'm just going to lay my swatches out. It's just a clean tea towel and I'm just going to, this is what I normally do with garments, just roll it up, give it a little squeeze. I'd use a towel with a bigger project, but these are just swatches. Always treat your swatch the way you're going to treat your finished garment. All that does is take out some of that excess water without agitating it. Now I'm just going to pin these out and check we can easily match gauge. And then I'm going to let them dry. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I've blocked them, measured them, and they both match the gauge that I want. I'm going to let them dry completely. Then I could just double check before I progress that I'm happy with the drape. You'll also notice on this one that um, I've switched sides. So before you had the other side facing and you can see how the, uh, the colour stripes are different. So that the stripes and colour changes will look different on each side. The other thing to mention, when you're counting stitches, it can often be useful to count them on a contrast row because it's much easy to see. So you can see the little small top of the stitch there and the larger there, which make the pairs. And it's often easier to see when you've got colour changes. So that can be quite a useful little tip too. Okay, let's let those dry. So while they're drying, I just want to have a quick discussion about size selection. So here I've got a copy of the short stories pattern. When you're choosing size, the first thing to look at, we've got here the measurements chart. So you've got this is the to fit bust measurement. So that's kind of what, what your bust measurement will be classed as. The sweater has a little bit of positive ease, so you can see the extra small that's to fit bust 76. The finished bust is 85. So that's got nine centimeters of positive ease, which just means it's bigger than the body it's made to fit. So you've got nine centimeters around your bust of clearance. So when you're choosing a size, bust is the first thing to look at. You, you want it to fit around your chest. Pretty much everything else is easier to adjust around bust. Not everything. Um, the other thing we want to look at with this design is the shoulder to shoulder distance. So for that, I'll show you that in a second. So let's just have a quick look at these others. So your finish length here, this is really easy to adjust for this pattern because you can just add or remove rows. The sweater I'm going to make is going to be a cropped sweater. So I'm going to have probably a similar number of rows to the cardigan. Um, upper arm, your bicep. You want to measure your bicep you know these measurements are proportionate based on the craft yarn council measurements but you may find if you've got you know proportionally smaller or larger biceps than your bust measurement you can actually work with a different uh, sleeve size in this pattern you don't want to really change more than one size but there are ways to adjust the sleeve and um, so if you're on the border between two then just bear that in mind. Again, you will have some positive ease in the bust, not a huge amount on the cardigan, a little bit more on the sweater. So measure your um, bicep. I think I said bust there, I meant bicep. Armhole depth, that is the depth from the top of your shoulder to the underarm. So that's a, a 2D dimension, whereas your um, upper arm measurement, that is a circumference. So this is where to start. We start choosing our size with bust and then we're just going to zoom to the end of the pattern and look at the schematics. So the schematics have quite a bit more um, detail on them. So we've got a schematic of the finished constructed item and one of the panel pieces. So the shoulder to shoulder measurement I mentioned earlier is this measurement here and to get a close fit on the shoulder you want these edge points to hit the the top edge bone of your shoulder so if you put your hand on your shoulder and just reach from your neck out towards the edge of your shoulder you'll feel the kind of 
edge of that bone. I'm sorry, I don't know the uh, anatomical name of that particular bone, your shoulder bone. So that's where you want to be measuring to there. And that's what this measurement should relate to. There is a little bit of positive ease, just a centimetre or two here. Um, so you're going to drop from your shoulder. So imagine your shoulder comes out like so and your arms there. So you're going to drop and this section is going to go underneath the arm. So this armhole shaping really gives it um, the nice fit. So that is the other measurement I would look at when choosing your size. Again, the armhole depth, relatively easy to change. It does change the sleeve size. So you want to think about that. But width, shoulder to shoulder, bicep, those are the three measurements that I would really focus on when you're choosing your size. And also think about whether you want a tight fit or a loose fit. This design has, I think, around between the, the sweater and the cardigan, around five to 11 or so centimetres of positive ease. So it's kind of classic fit. It's not super tight, but it's, de it's you know, the way I've designed it in the sizing is it's not oversized. Obviously, you can sort of choose the size that reflects how you want to wear your garment. So any questions about sizing or selecting size or working out which size to choose, do just drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them either in the comments or in next week's vlog. Right, just before the light goes for the day, I've got the dried swatches. This one has softened up a lot with that blocking. You can see they've both got lovely drape. Um, I'm really pleased this one's come out all right with the, the blocking. Um, one thing to note, wrong side, right side, there's a, a big note on the pattern in this, but when you're starting your back panel, which is what we're going to do next, that's what week two is going to focus on, make sure your tails are on the same side. That way you know you've got the right side and wrong side. So if I were to choose this as the right side, I know because my starting tails are on the same side that this is both the same side. Okay, hopefully you know what I meant by that check your tails are the same. So that's everything I wanted to talk about this week. It has been quite a lot, it probably won't be this intense every week on the vlog. What we're going to do next week, well you're going to go off and do your swatching and make sure you're happy with your gauge, choose your size, everything we've discussed. In next week's vlog I'm going to show you the sort of step-by-step -step growth of the back panel. So we're actually going to start making next week which is exciting but for now make your swatch oh any questions in the meantime just drop them in the comments pop them on the facebook page pop them on instagram wherever you like and i will incorporate any answers that i think will help everybody in next week's vlog or i'll just reply to your comments online bye